Hello, my name's Penny and I'm in my crafty corner this week having a chat just about what I've been doing this week, what I've been making this week and yes, anything along the way. So please join me and welcome to all my beautiful viewers and if you're new, welcome to. So that's the introductions. Um, where should we start? Well, I'm looking at what I've been making this week. Shall we plunge straight in? Okay. Uh, what's been keeping me, what I call grounded as a counsellor, I was a counsellor for the NHS for goodness knows how long, a long time. And we used to work, use the word ground. What grounds you? What, what keeps you safe? What, what makes you feel like, yeah, you've got ground under your feet. I'm not a great one for flying. And that puts me on, you see, this is how my, sorry, if you're new, that's where my brain works. But I've had a wonderful offer uh, to come and stay from one of my viewers. And I don't fly, that's the thing. I used to years ago, but I wouldn't go without Pete. And I'm going to blame it on him because I know he'd be, he'd be worried. People say you don't fly, why don't you fly? Well, because I don't, and that's that. So, yeah. Thank you so much for that offer. I'm going to come on to that later on. Now, why did I mention that? Oh, yes, being grounded. I used to do an exercise with my client. Just put your feet on the floor and feel your feet. Can you do that? I can feel my feet. They feel quite heavy. They feel warm. I've got my long socks on today. Now, can you... Close your eyes and imagining, imagine the floor beneath your feet. So you're letting go of that feeling of your feet, but now you're thinking of the floor supporting your feet. And that's very grounding. It helps you to keep safe and you can practice that throughout the day as I do. But something else keeps me safe and that is crafting. And I'm onto my new craft which is um, making memory books because oh, every time I go around the house I find this, I find that, I find things I haven't seen. I found, um, oh, in 1967 we moved into a very unusual house. I got married in 68 and I found all the photographs of it. My dad, well that's another story. I might tell you about that next week but I found all the photographs and um, so yes, there's that, there's this, there's that. So I'm making memory books and I'm loving it because just as I loved quilting, you get a small piece of fabric, you put another small piece of fabric, you sew it together and you've got a quilt and it's like magic and it's about designing. And I found that I really like doing it with this paper. <laughs> so for instance, a lady on treasure books I've forgotten her name now but uh, she's so she teaches you so well treasure books and what to do with a 12 by 12 piece of paper oh I'm leaping straight in aren't I well here we are I even used the front cover of, of some paper I had it's a stamperia book so here we are with the 12 by 12 paper you score along the middle like that Okay, I mean, I know so many of you have done this for years and you say, we've been doing this for eight years, it's new for me. <laughs> I've just stumbled into this new world. It's like Alice in Wonderland who's gone down, you know. And then you, you just make a score there and you make a score there. You fold those in and you fold those in and stick them down. Here we go. Stick them down. And you can put that in the middle page of your journal. And you've got all the pockets to put photographs. The other thing you can do with that is turn it like that. You've still got the same amount of pockets. But you've got two more pockets on the end here. That's just, this is why I like it. 
it's just one piece of paper in fact that was the front cover that you can't really use but as you can see it's all it's all it you know the name of the books all in the folds so I did this one I wanted to fold mine so I can put it in my memory book now this is my second one actually because I've given one memory book to Kim my daughter when I went up to visit my great grandson George I'll tell you about that in a minute so one pocket here you can journal on you know write the little bits down you can put oh yes one there one there one here and you can write all the little bits on there you turn it round and oh my daughter gave me some papers which was quite a thrill so that's one of them a little front pocket so you can put a photograph in there another one in that flap and then another one in this flap and then on the side oh I, I made an envelope it's only a question of folding that piece of paper I put a little magnet on it, first time of using a magnet. And you can stuff that with photographs or, you know, little bits and bobs of mums and dads. So one, oh well, any number you can fit in there. That's from that 12 by 12 piece of paper. It's pretty, isn't it? But it's the folding of it. It's the getting to. Oh, so so. Um, my granddaughter said, "Oh Nan," she said. One of Nan's um, sayings was, "Well, that's that job jobbed." So we we'll write that on the card. Another one my daughter said was, "Do you want a tinkle?" Which she used to say to them if they needed the loo. And then oh, there was another one. You see. They go in there and out there. Oh, I know. My daughter said, whenever you rang on the doorbell, she'd answer the door and say, well, what have you done with this weather? So that these little sayings that you can so easily forget and that come to your mind at all different times of the day will be written on there. Um, oh, yes. The other thing is um, that people have been saying, um people I watch this is treasure books idea which as you saw opened up but I've closed it up and how have I closed it up I've sewn it on my sewing machine so it, if you sew down there you don't have to stick I like doing that it looks quite nice so that was one thing I did okay now I watch, um, oh, this is where my brain goes, isn't it? We've talked about this before. My brain's been very good this week. I've had so much to do. I've been sorting out mum's house. Oh, I can't tell you how much I've been doing. One, I'm glad that I felt well enough to do it. And uh, But it's Friday today and I've come to the end. So, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yes. Camellia Crafts. Julie. She showed me how to make this uh, last night, actually. I watched it. So, this again is one of my front covers. Upside down. Okay. She says... Score down the middle, again, just like that other one. Score across, score across. She tells you the measurements. And then, oh, uh, and then, that's it, I think. And then you fold it, and you've got a little journal. And, oh, <laughs> I folded it. Oh, no, it, it'll come, hang on. It'll cut, oh no. I can feel the way I've folded it. There, done it. See, this is what I like about it. 
That's it. That's it. I've done it. Okay. So there's my front cover. There's my front cover. Open it up. And I'm going to cover all this, you know, with, with papers that will stick there. Do little so that you can put your photographs in and all of that. This is just the basics. Then you glue, stick those together or sew it along there and then you can put something else in that pocket too and then you've got these so that folds over that pocket that folds in and that folds there so I've got yeah thank you Julie of Camellia Crafts okay what else what else have I got to show you that? Oh, here's one. Well, I just did a bit there. And oh, what's this one? Oh, my daughter gave me some papers, a card. And I thought, well, I'll cut that bit off and just stick it at the top. This one she gave me, just little bits of paper. But you see, you can pop them in and... Is that one of the ones I've just shown you? Yes, from Julie. I've got to sort all that one out. So that's the one I didn't do. I've stuck that. Oh yes. And I made oh I made a little envelope. You can you can close that with a magnet or all different ways, but I wanted to leave mine open so that you can see what to put in there. It's just a little envelope. Flap up. Julie tells you they do they have got a name for them but that's the same one as Julie just showed but yeah not in the front cover so that's going to be finished it's just about making pockets putting them all together here's another pocket and I sewed round this was the first time I used my sewing machine can you see sewing round there well I've loaded that one that's what it looks like with photos. Just one piece of paper that you cut round. I used a box, the lid of a box to cut that shape. This is all going to be bound together. And then on here, I've got another place to put things. Oh, one my daughter gave me. You know, there's a big pocket there for lots of things. And I made another little envelope. That's my nan and granddad's wedding. I've shown you that before. That's my mum when she was a schoolgirl. I think it's at a wedding. There she is. So, yes, you can see where I'm heading with all of this. It's just bits of paper stuck on other bits of paper. That means you can put loads in there. Do you want to see what I've done for my brother? This was going to be a short one. I'm up to... Oh, well. That's a well-known phrase or saying. I say it every week. And this is one I've done for my brother. He's coming over. He lives in um, uh, Dublin. He's coming over... Not next Monday, the Monday after. And I've made him this, full of treasures. It's the first page. Oh, you see, everything's going to fall out. Hang on. There's him when he was a little boy. I thought he'd like that. Oh, I think, let me just take that out. Other bits he'd like. There's a picture of him on my mum's lap. Having his nappy changed. Those nappies, they were huge. So that goes in there. My dad belonged to a, a, a club in London, the Pickwick Club. It's quite famous. And anything Dickens, anything Pickwick, he loved. So that's going in there. Had a, had a stamp of that dad had on his desk. So that's going in there. Oh, what have I got here? A picture of mum and dad. Oh, my dad was a great one for Tottenham Hotspur. So he had that. 
um, one of Pitt's cards because we used to play Pitt. Oh, this, you see how you can get a nice lot in these, these, um, you know, pockets. My, my dad was a prison visitor. Uh, he did, uh, well, he got the freedom of the city of London because of his work that he did for, for prisoners. Because he felt, well, okay, they've done their, their term, but they need help when they come out. So that was his handbook for prison visitors. Um, oh, of course, mum loved her coronation street. So we got one of our Hilda Ogden's sayings. Um, packet of seeds. My dad was a gardener, absolute gardener. Um, he loved his garden. Right up until the end, he loved his garden. He was a member of the City of London Livery Club when he was made a Freeman of the City of London. And there was a book about it. Um, and this just tells you a little bit from the book. Well, the book would, we can't keep all the books. So I thought that's just a little memory. Goes in the envelope I made there. Or oh, this was the first, a little, a little magnetised with, oh, can you see that photo of mum? Whoops. I'll have to put it all back together when I've sh shown you. Oh, little journaling spaces. Chrissy will have his own things. My mum and dad did the Times crossword every single day. And um, that's just one of her little writings. Picture of us as a family, me and my brother, Pete, my mum and dad, and my two girls. And a little bit from my mum's geography book that my dad wrote in. Here we go. My brother with mum in our little flat in Tottenham. He's got the look of Tommy about him. And then a picture of mum. At Chris's wedding. She looks lovely with him there. Ah, she used to just tape everything for my dad. What's what we're watching today, Eva? And uh, she'd tape it all, write it out. <laughs> and she was a great one for lists. I've got books of them round there. So I thought, why Cliff? And and if he'd read if he'd watched it or not, all ticked off. I found a a newspaper cutting with mum there member of the WRVS she used to do meals on wheels and that's a picture of our old house the one that I told you dad renovated and oops that's 20 minutes can you believe it picture of mum and dad picture of their wedding I've got all these pockets you see because I did this one that does four pockets on oh, um, my dad's school report this one's just an A4 piece of ordinary paper but there's so many pockets if you fold it a certain way I'm sorry if you don't like this all <laughs> well you know me every time it's different here's my dad's school report um, a pupil at Ruckholt Central School, July 1941, that's when he left school. He's been a pupil at the school for the past four years. Attendance and punctuality have been quite satisfactory. He's an intelligent, no, he is intelligent, a bright and cheerful manner and a quick and ready wit. He is a lad with ideas and initiative and he's good natured, willing, helpful and anxious to please. He is keen and enthusiastic in the subjects that appeal to him. Well, isn't the same for all of us. He's truthful and honest. He should make a useful and helpful employee. Now that I thought my brother might like. So there it all is. A picture of Dad there. There it all is in that little book. How good is that? And then I watched... Uh, oh, that's got to go in there. And then I watched Fiona of Miss Paint-A-Lot. And she's been doing 
um, you know, this book that I found on Mum and Dad's bookcase. It's been annihilated now. The Country Diary of an Edwardian Lady. So I made this for my daughter Nicola. Again, a little magnet to do it up. Hope I can show you. It's much easier if I lay it flat. But there we are. On the back, a journaling card, so you can write all the notes that you want. Uh, it's all a flippy flappy again. Here we go. With all play. Oh, I did a a pocket that's quite deep. And a flippy flappy that you can put the photos in the edge there. That opens out. Well, do you know the one where I took my daughter Nicola to um, the Natural History Museum and she'd done shrews at uh, her playgroup or, or, or the first year in school. She was very young. And, uh, and we'd also been talking about Oh, bones, that's right, about skeleton. So it was about shrews and skeleton that was in her head. And at the uh, natural history, you could press the button and the skeleton went like that. And so the body obviously went down to nothing. And every, everything she saw there, she said, Mum, is that a shrew? Mum, is that a shrew? No, no. And so I took her to the loo. There she was, sitting with all her curly hair, swinging her legs. I said, well, what have you learnt today, Nicola? Well, it's a good job God gave us bones. And there's not a lot of shrews about. <laughs> and so I've had to put a little shrew in for her. And this is sweet to a mouse. A nice lot of photos can go there. My mum was born in June and so was my granddaughter born in June. So again... Lots of space and lots of places to write these little things we want to remember. My dad was born in June too. So she said, oh, mum, if you're doing that, you do have to remember how to fold it up. Hang on, I'll put it down. All this flippy flappy, it's all very well. Here we go, here we go. That's it, that's it. So, yes, I just got some, you know, some stiffish paper card and then well you cut out the pages of the book and stuck it on a lot of sticking and gluing and you feel grounded it really relaxes you well it relaxes me so that's what i've been up to that's what i've been up to sticking and gluing wise i gave my two granddaughters books for them to fill out bits and bobs about the children, the Peter Rabbit flippy flappies. So they've each got that. And I gave my daughter one of those for her to remember, you know, all the bits. So when she comes and visits, she can go through all the stuff and choose what she wants to fill it. And then there's one for my other daughter. So I think that's enough about that, don't you? I'll show you what I've been knitting. It's not quite dry, but I'll show you. Tom, Lois said, Nan, Tommy's grown out of his cardigans because obviously, you know, I made them, well, a long time ago. So he's 13 months now, but I must say that it in, he was born on the 26th. So I don't know what the date is today, but we're nearly there. So he's going to be 14 months. And of course, George, when I visited him this week, was two weeks so my two great-grandsons are a joy. But, well, it hasn't really finished drying. <laughs> it's just uh, I, I hang my woolies over the bath on the side uh, with towels. But here it is. It's got a nice cable collar and cables down the front. It looks pretty big, but I think when it's fully dry, it's going to fit him. I've got to put the buttons on later. And a nice collar. So I think that'll be nice. It The pattern has got a couple of pockets on. Let me show you the pattern. It's from the same book that I knitted my great-granddaughter's jacket, Mila. And um, I didn't want to put the pocket on. 
Here we are. It's Walnut by Martin Story. But I think the pockets are a bit much for a little one. So I'm pleased with how it's turned out. It's just got to dry. I'll put the buttons on and then he's coming to visit next Wednesday with my grandson and my granddaughter. And we're going to have a nice day together. Well, lunch together. So, oh, I, I was going through a chest of drawers around my mum's and I found this. They call it a bell pull because you buy a little thing that you hang up. And put a little pull up, you know, little tassel on the end. I don't know. I found it in her chest of drawers. So I did that. Well, I asked my friend because she did one at about the same time. It's an Eva Rosen stand. It's very pretty. Um, I think we did this in about 1979 or 1980. So I brought it home and I washed it. And I think I'm going to get a little hook that you're supposed to have. Maybe I never got round to it and mum just put it in the drawer. And that can hang up. I was pleased to find it. A bit screwed up. It's quite cute, isn't it? So that was a find. Oh, so I, just to finish, I wanted to say thank you. I know I am often saying thank you, but thank you, thank you, thank you to all your lovely comments. I mean, I marvel at your comments. Thank you for watching if you don't comment. I'm very grateful about that too. But the people that do comment, it's not just a, you know, offhand comment. It's a really thoughtful comment. And as I say, I have had, I couldn't sleep the other night and I was just messaging someone You'll see if you look down. I was messaging someone in America. They were obviously watching during the day <clears throat> from Utah. And I, I was just amazed, you know, come and stay. So I've been really touched and it, it has really helped me. And so I was saying, well, I'm really grateful. And then, you know, what I'm like with words. I looked them up. Gratitude. And it, I thought it was some interesting ways of looking at gratitude. Gratitude gives us a positive view of ourselves. Well, I'd never have thought of that. Showing gratitude to someone else gives a positive view of me. I'm saying thank you to you for your comments, but I'm realising that you appreciate what I'm doing, what I'm saying. And because you're showing your gratitude for, for my videos. And so that tells me something about me. Well, that's a nice feeling. It helps you feel good about yourself. So showing gratitude to other people helps you feel good about yourself. I'm saying thank you to you in return. And so you can have that good feeling. Well, I've done that and um, Penny's really appreciating it. You feel, yes. So expressing gratitude contributes to happiness and it strengthens friendships. Grateful people, it said, are more likely to be helpful people. They notice kindnesses expressed to them and feel moved to be kind in return. So alternate between being givers and receivers. The more grateful you are, the more good you can see. Yes, because you're looking around for the good, aren't you? The good in people rather than the bad. And <clears throat> this university professor said, it helps neutralise negativity. So regular practice of gratefulness can change the way our brain neurons fire 
into more positive automatic patterns. As a counsellor, we used to talk about gnats and pats, negative automatic thoughts and positive automatic thoughts. And it was about changing someone's automatic, negative automatic, always going down that path. Oh, yes, but, you know, to uh, positive automatic thoughts automatic thoughts you, you don't even think about but the more you practice showing gratitude the the way it changes the neurons in your brain to positive automatic thoughts oh well, that was interesting think about why you're grateful to family and friends yeah don't just be grateful think about why because when you've identified what you appreciate tell them it strengthens relationships helps you experience the happiness that comes from giving time magazine said people who describe themselves as feeling grateful tend to have higher vitality more optimism and suffer less stress and then the last thing i found was grateful being grateful helps people cope with daily problems, especially stress, and to achieve a positive view of self. So being grateful what somebody else has done and, and expressing that really helps not only that other person because they've heard that, but also self. And we teach our children to express thanks right from an early age, don't we? Say thank you. Say thank you. And do you know what it reminded me of? Um, it reminded me that I've got a list of people at the hospital, at the GP surgery, uh, at other places, a little list of people that I want to send a card to. And I've been so busy and, as you know, so poorly for so long. And now I'm feeling better. Don't forget the list. Isn't it easy just to leave it on the shelf over there? So talking about gratitude reminded me to get the list done so I'm going to do that today and I'm also going out for a walk because the sun now is coming out and uh, I think it'll do me good just to oh yeah unwind so that's it for this week what about the film well I went to see George my new great-grandson uh, he was two weeks old and adorable I'm going again on Monday. It's an hour and a half on the train, but I don't care. I just get on, put my mask on, sit there, head down and uh, spend the day there and come back. It's worth it. Um, I, you know, every, every week counts, doesn't it? So the little film is of George. And we were saying how he's like his mum. And then, of course, that reminded my daughter. You know, I said, oh, it seems yesterday you were born. And then, yes, and Pete piped up, well, it seems yesterday that our daughter was born. And then Tommy, my other great-grandson, he wanted to take the dog for a walk, so he went and stood by the front door. <laughs> and then his mum and dad took him to um, our local, well, it's in Canterbury, theatre, because Dougie was on. And we watched Dougie on the television. He loves it. And she said he sat the whole time and absolutely was absorbed in it. He enjoyed himself immensely. So there's a little film of that. So thank you so much for joining me this week. And thank you so much for being interested in my family and what I've been up to and what I've been doing. So I'll see you next time. Take care. Enjoy whatever you're doing this week. And I know we've all, you know, lots of you. Are... Yeah, anyway, take care. Bye.
said to it, it's really emotional because it brings back memories. Ha, ha, ha.